discussion of our initiative. Uh, but I would like almost to thank you, lah, I ask Sabri. He datang all the way from Johor, eh, and he's on one mic. <laughs> Fantastic, come all the way from Johor here. This is where I guess an MNC company where you have good operational excellence. You can really be anywhere, uh, connected and do your work. Eh? Uh, and also Encik Jeffrey from EPF. So, we are so um, So, they unconditionally come over and share uh, what have you done in EPF and this all no problem. So, they come over and uh, spend their time here. So, looking forward for a good session. Uh, it will be a very informal one. Uh, let's have a lot of sharing. So, without further ado, uh, we'll start with Encik Sabri for about 30 minutes or so and then
And uh, after that, I moved to Flexronic. Thought they want to out from Laka, went to Johor, but only for six months. They closed, uh, actually they're not closed, they're moving to the another part of Johor. I want to stay, I went back to Melaka in Finion, so stay there for another three years. Start to join project management. After that, uh, I got offer from Dyson, uh, 2010. Start joining Dyson as a project manager. Three years, and after that, uh, six years uh, doing the global process optimization. So, I, Dyson is a global technology company. We are focusing on the consumer product. Uh, I think in Malaysia, this two, three years, we start to see more showroom Dyson in Malaysia compared to uh, previous one. Okay, uh, that's about me. Okay, I will talk about, just speak about Dyson, eh? Sir James Dyson. Uh, it's quite young, 20 years younger compared to our Prime Minister. He's around 72 uh, years old now. Still very active, involved in product design. He's considered one of the considered main icon in terms of the innovation and so on. Uh, he started doing the design around 1978. Uh, and around 1983, the first vacuum cleaner model coming out after around 5,000 over prototype that he, 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 he tried to build the first world uh, backless vacuum cleaner. Uh, Dyson is very famous with vacuum cleaner, but now we have uh, uh, many more uh, product uh, under the Dyson brand and also the latest one is electric car. I think our, our Prime Minister also went to visit, see him uh, when he first come to uh, power. But unfortunately that project also is now considered stop. I think after the project transfer to Singapore. Dyson still do the project, but they give it to Singapore? Uh, no, we officially consider stop because of the commercialization reason after five years. We actually bought an airport already in UK, a limited airport, to build up the whole test facilities because the car need to have a very big uh, area to do the testing. But unfortunately, you know, there is a very tough decision that uh, they need to do. So three months ago, we need to officially announce that we stopped the project and uh, we are absorbing the resources to our current product. We have uh, currently vacuum cleaner and also we involve in the technology other product, for example, like digital motor, uh, airbrake hand dryer, uh, blackless, blackless pen. I think this is when I explain about the Dyson uh, name brand to people, they always say, oh, the, the blackless pen. I think Malaysia always uh, linked to, to that product. And now I think uh, beauty product, we are, I think that's one of the, our key product right now the hand dryer, the, the pink color hand dryer. And uh, yeah, the HQ uh, already moved to Singapore last year. We moved the HQ from UK to Singapore. Worldwide, we are around 17,000 employees present. And uh, 3,000 over uh, position. And roughly, we are expanding around 10 million a week for product development. We are very, very serious in product development. It took around two to three years to come up with the first product, 150 weeks for the new generation of the product. For the Evo, maybe slightly uh, faster. Okay? That's for the introduction, myself and the company uh, that I'm working right now. All right, so uh, today, topic given by Juan Candiza is about rethinking your existing work processes for operational excellence. So I just want to make sure that we fully understand uh, just the, the, the definition when we talk about the work processes. This is 
the methods that we use to visualize, document how we do our day-to-day -day work, how each of the function in the organization doing their work. This is considered the standard practice and, uh, in terms of the process flow diagram and so on. There are few software uh, focusing on this. For example, like uh, Signaview, uh, <coughs> Tyson, this year decided that we, we go for the Signaview for, the, our, for our process flow. Before this, we also just use the standard Microsoft software to, to manage and also sometimes just use uh, Excel, a very traditional way. Okay, this is just uh, the way to manage day-to-day uh, -day tasks uh, in organization uh, or company. And this is also for, for me, I involve uh, around five to six years doing the operation uh, process optimization. This is considered the first documents that you need to have, the first information that you need to have before you can talk about want to optimize the process. Right? This is considered the baseline. Okay, uh, Okay. now the, the second area that I would like to emphasize is about the process optimization. And this picture uh, I found in the internet very interesting. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with this. This is change, manage, change management curve model. Okay, this, uh, this is from Carmona Consulting. This is to show how from the existing process, we discover the opportunity to do the improvement. And to do the improvement, you come up with a solution. And after that, you need to talk to your team, talk to your stakeholders that we need to do this. So change is not easy. People are not, not really comfortable to do the change but change for the benefit definitely we, we need to do it so this is quite common discover visualize engage enable and embed the change solution itself okay so I, I try to divide uh, the scope into existing work process we are doing the process optimization and operational excellence so the detail about the process optimization, this is considered the top level definition uh, and general understanding. When we talk about the process optimization, definitely we, we focus on the wastage. We would like to eliminate time, uh, resources wastage, unnecessary cost, bottleneck or mistake while achieving the, the, the process objective. And we want to achieve the organization efficiency uh, to make sure that the, the organization, organization can perform better. This is part of the business process management discipline, BPM. In this community, there are two uh, considered standard term, enterprise architecture and also business process management. I'm also new to this community. When I attended the conference in London, I, I met with people from all over the world talking about this. And Mr. Jeffrey uh, from EPF, he's more expert in the enterprise architecture and he will cover that more. Okay, uh, improve organi organization uh, competitiveness, accurate and up-to-date information data, greater, greater adaptability to the global business technology and digital transformation, meaning we want to get the organization ready for transformation. We are in the transformation phase uh, to, to make sure that the, you know, the country is become better and better. Also for the performance monitoring and accountability and also for the higher quality result for the organization. <coughs> okay, I just want to continue with showing one of the example, uh, the method that we use in Dyson. And uh, I think it's quite standard for the Six Sigma program as well to use a VSM. I'm not sure whether this is uh, being used in MC, MC or so not, right? Okay. Six Sigma, I think some departments are Okay. Uh, 
the reason that I want to show this is to emphasize the importance of the current process, existing process. Because if you look here, the whole process before we look at the visualized future state, this is to identify the current state. You need to select the process area to map the process architecture framework, develop the process architecture framework, do the CIPOP, CIPOP cyber cover letter, process material information flow, process data collection, process and lead time data, and verify the current state map. This is talking about the existing process itself. Before you talk about the improvement, you really need to understand your current process. And only that when you do the process improvement, it will really, really help you to do better. If not, you will in always in a big circle. You, you try to ask a question, but you don't have the answer because the, the foundation is not really strong. The existing process is not really enough information. Okay, this is one of the example, the templates or the method that we use in Dyson. Okay, uh, okay, this is uh, still under the existing work processes. I would like to share it. This is the actual program that uh, I, I did in Dyson, almost completed. Uh, we want to close that program uh, by this month. The program for operation transformation program started uh, September last year. For Dyson product development process, let's say around two years, we call uh, pro uh, yeah, from NPI to the uh, product development from UK to SEA. Uh, there are four uh, main functions involved, RBD, operation, quality and commercial. RBD is a research, design and development. It's engineering part from the idea, drawing, define the requirements and also come up with a spec for that particular product. For the operation is to transfer from idea to reality. Meaning that you need to get a tool maker to produce the plastic part, to go and buy the standard part and also to fabricate the PCBA. And uh, for Dyson, uh, for many products, we don't do our own manufacturing line. We get our contract manufacturer to do it. We have our contractor. So there is one department to handle that particularly. We pay that contractor just to provide us the space. The line, part, the spec, everything we provide to the contractor. The contractor is space and also the, the resources of the operator to, to do the assembly. Even the test equipment, all, everything we provide. To, to the contractor. There are five or six companies in Joe uh, doing that uh, service for us and one in Philippines currently and we are developing the Philippines to, to support the, the REMA. Okay, on this uh, program, uh, in terms of establish the existing work processes, the first phase we work with uh, operation team. So my, my role is to, to support the operation team. I have my colleague to support engineering and also another clip to support quality and commercial so uh, the first phase to establish the operation business process foundation with a grid process architecture framework we need to agree the structure first core durable kpi for each sub function and we need to do the, the, the process mapping the second phase is to integrate to integrate between all these functions, RDD, operation, quality, and commercial. First phase is within each of the function. The second phase is to do the integration. And this definitely need to have a series of uh, global process workshop and the Skype meeting to make sure that uh, the discussion is continued. Uh, the, the whatever process that we publish is agreed cross-functionally because after we establish each of the function, do the integration, if let's say we say that for it, for this process, the input is coming from the another function, that function into the group. Okay? Okay, on this uh, program, I would like to emphasize the few key elements that need to consider key for the success, which is program sponsorship from senior executive management, 
process ownership and responsibility assignment metric this is very very important okay because sometimes that we thought that that process is below to that function when we go and ask them say no this process is not belong to me because everyone is using this process why you come to me so sometimes that we need to go to the top management to decide who own this process if that process is cross functional maybe the majority uh, of the people using that process but definitely certain function is dominant okay program governance framework which project key decision are made centralized process knowledge when we have that process we need to have a place where to store that process so that everyone can go and take a look as a reference for the continuous discussion and so on business process management uh, i think that framework also and also the document structure starting from the top how we want to manage the vision and so on up to the detail uh, process templates and uh, you know all the details of guideline and so on okay uh, still talking about this existing work process i also would like to emphasize about this cyborg standardized standardized approach try to use one format to make sure that we can have a standard approach to say that this is the cyborg is supplier input process output and customer this is also one of the standard format uh, used in the six sigma and the reason that we in dyson we use this because this is very easy to tell for each for process is very standard it must have input process and output so for that input who is responsible to give so that's a supplier and for each of the process must have the owner and each of the output who are the customer that will receive and use output of that process okay uh, am i going so fast or just nice or okay i think we need to try to catch up <laughs> Okay. Okay. This is the another uh, important activities to establish your existing work process. The process mapping exercise itself. Sometimes people talk that okay, I want to develop my process. I just go and write, and after that share. Okay, this is the process. But it will take a longer time to get the agreement from cross functional to say that this is the right process. This is what we are doing today. It's better to call everyone, lock them in the room, and after that, ask them to really brainstorm, tell how you do it, what are your input, who giving you the information for you to do your work, so that you can really map, and after that, you can come up with the first draft of the process. Maybe after that, need to do a continuous two, three round of discussion and come up, okay, this is the ugly as is process. Don't talk about improvement yet. Sometimes, this is always a challenge when we conduct the, the, the process mapping workshop because people come, they thought that they straight want to improve the process. You must come up with a foundation first. Yes, there is an idea. It's a lot of idea that you want to do here and there. Okay, we can capture the idea, but the baseline is very, very important. And again, I would like to emphasize the process ownership is very, very important because it's always misunderstanding between process owner and the optimization team. Process owner always thought that this is optimization team responsibility to go and do everything for them. Even to manage that process, to go and take a look at that process to improve is process optimization team. But I think that understanding is slightly not accurate because process owner is the best person know how the process work they know what is the problem with that process they know well which area that they can improve optimization yes So, apa 
Okay. It's a very good question. I think it's very linked to what we have right now. Dyson is a global technology company. We build by engineers. So engineering is very ahead of others' department. When I joined Dyson uh, 2010, operation department still not yet exist. When I joined, considered pioneer for the operation uh, for the process optimization, we haven't talked about want to support the operation yet. So we start with engineering first because that's the nature of us. But for MCMC, you need to decide which one that you need to. How how is the strategy to make sure that everyone get the same attention, the same resources, and you all at the same level. Don't don't end up like us. Engineering ahead compared to operation and quality because the alignment is very very difficult. For example, like when you have the investment, uh, software investment, and so on, which is very engineering centric. So operation want to catch up. They want to catch up with their own function, and after that they also need to catch up with the optimization activities. It's very difficult. But to answer your question, respective organization, you need to decide the strategy which department, if you want to make one department ahead of others, so that's your decision. But my suggestion is make it balanced. Optimization need to play a role, meaning that in terms of the structure itself. So you need to tell that this is cross-functionally. Each of the function, you need to have your own team to define your process, and after that, you need to do the cross-functional alignment. And I hope that, that answered the question. Eh? Okay. And uh, yeah, the agreed standard documentation, the RACI table, uh, responsible, accountable, consulted, and informed, informed is very, very important, meaning that very defined clearly who is doing what. All right, uh, tangible achievement and target official publication. Okay, when doing the process mapping, right? The publication of the official process is very, very key. That is considered the output that we want to achieve. In my experience, there are people that at the initial stage, they don't want to get involved. But when we want to publish the process, they only step in and they comment a lot. Even the, the aim, the title, everything they comment, and that will drag another one or two months. Try to avoid this. If let's say, the team already agreed with this, so this is the one that we want to bring and publish. Improvement, okay, maybe the next revision. Let's use this first. Okay. Communication and process training modules is very important. And after we have the, the, the first process, try to make sure that everyone involved in that process use that first. Embed that process in the day-to-day -day, uh, organization activity. And yeah, just now that I mentioned about the process owner and optimization team, ideal versus reality of the process, which process versus the current process, process owner no best detailed day to day activities and role and responsibility alignment. Okay, in terms of get people on board with change, huh? so this is the key. If let's say we want to do the, the, the process optimization, we really need to explain to the people why. Start with this first. Get them understand why we need to change, why we need to improve, and why they need to be part of the program. This is not something that we try to go and disturb their area, but this is something that they need to do now. Or later, there is something will happen if let's say we are not doing that. Communication is very, very important. Starting in progress, and after that, when we complete something, do the celebration and so on. And lead by example. I think in terms of the top management itself, must give a commitment to show how important the program. And I think this is key for the optimization team to really engage with the uh, top management, communicate the progress, communicate the, the, the efforts, that have been done by the team itself. Okay? 
and just want to share a success story uh, from my program. We have 40 over uh, process that we publish and even recently we have what we call Operation Process Day to further call the process owner, review our achievement, ask again whether is there any changes that we need to do and I think the, the, this is considered the biggest achievement for the operation. When we started this, they are very, not said reluctant, but they are very focused to their day-to-day -day job. Don't come and disturb me. Okay, I want to fo I, I, I don't have a resources to do my day-to-day -day job, but you ask me to, to take a look at my own process. So they, it's, it's very rich now. But now, after I think almost a year, now, so the function already agreed that they allocate the resources to set up their own uh, process office, their own team to manage this. This is our consider main successful of the program, and we we success to change the mindset of the process owner to own the process, to really take a look at the process and have the self improvement initiative and now we just need to manage them instead of we need to go and you know, knock them every day to, to go and uh, improve the process and uh, the department also agreed that they, they are going to put this as part of their blueprint to change their organization to become process driven organization that's very very key meaning that they, they give a commitment that they really want to improve Okay, I think uh, it's almost almost time, but it's very quick, quick one about the operational excellence. Uh, this is the mindset that we need to change. Sustainable improvement within the organization. This is a very, very important now in terms of make sure that the organization is competent. Sustainable improvement within the organization, and we need to to do this as a culture. Or I said we, we try to promote this for for a few years already, but it's not that easy. Lah. But must drive to make it happen. It's not easy. Okay, and also the journey to 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 put the right tool to the right process to create the ideal work culture, sustainable employee to stay empowered and motivated. Just very top level for the operational excellence, and I would like to uh, I share this to Anisa before regarding this book, Design for Digital. You can Google and maybe you can buy online. This book was given to each of the participants during the uh, enterprise architecture and the business process management conference. This book about five years of research to understand how company design to execute their strategies. Starting to 014, uh, total 40 companies, after that to 015, 2016 they continue to follow up with another 27 companies. And to 017, to 018, they wrap up and coming up with this result. Five years of research. I'm not yet finished reading this book, to be honest. Mm -hmm. but when I read the, the overview of this book, it's very, very, very uh, interesting to see that I think a lot of big old company in this country, and I think Malaysia, if you look my, my profile just now, I think I already jumped several companies. Six Sigma program, continuous improvement is very, very key program. I'm not sure about the, the government or government agencies, but I think it should have the same initiative. Because if we don't change, people will change us, or the economy, the world will change us. That's a fact. No one can challenge that. Okay? And this book is about digital economy and technologies. Smacking is the, the things that we, we talk about the, the technology. The book is really explain how the understanding of big company try to do the digital transformation. And I think every company, when we talk about digital transformation, the first thing that will, they talk is go to the IT department. IT department should lead that. And this book also is telling the same. 
the first that they found go to the IT department. But when you talk about the digital transformation or digital economy, this is the whole company transformation itself to become uh, competitive with the latest world challenge. Okay. Okay. I think last slide. Uh, disappeared famous brand. Where they are right now? Maybe if people around my age, I think all these brands is very famous. Huh? But they are no more. Are they not good? They are very good in their field. But why? They are no more in the industry. This is the, the always uh, uh, topic that people use when they talk about the change management. Why people need to do, why the organization need to do a change management? Because of this example. Yeah. Alright, uh, and I think the last one is this. Uh, so I think everyone is know about Nokia. When I started 1998 working, Nokia is my first phone. Uh, but now Nokia is very sad. It's no more in the industry. I think they still exist uh, somewhere. System or but it's very sad story. Put over by Microsoft, and I think I would like to show this video. I think it's good because we can very short video. And every time I look at this picture, it's really remind me about what I'm doing right now. And it's really motivated me. We didn't do anything wrong, but somehow we lost. And it's true. They didn't do anything wrong.
Okay. So I think by that video, uh, thank you very much. That's all for me. I hope that the knowledge is very useful. Sorry, uh, yeah, it's always here. Okay, thank you very much. Salam alaikum. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you one of the things when he said that Dyson has uh, stopped doing the electric car project and then they don't invest electric car project, beli airport and they can just decide to not do it and then he said they do 5,000 error before coming up with a product so to me it gives an impact that culture of learning is inside there they are not afraid to do mistake and they take accountability tak apa I'm not sure how is it the culture in here so I love it so scared I don't know how so I think that's one of the thing, culture of learning and making mistakes. I'm not sure that is something perspective that we have to think about how to address that. Then lagi satu dia kata tadi, department, department, department. Kita kena buat process dan kita kena integrate. Imagine kita ni dalam MCMC, banyak department, department kena integrate. They are doing integration among global. That's one engineering department and operation tak ada buat apa-apa. Mana nak start tak tahu. But then, you know, they... Global can come together for integration and improving process. Here in Mang Department, pun, um, we are just like that. We are just like that. We are so concentrating on oh, we need to deliver this, deliver this of NFCP, 5G, whatever. And that's my job. Jangan kacau. Those are the things. So I think there's a lot about culture, manage change, mindset, or even basic understand what is process, what is work, what is function. We do not understand how it relates to each other. But these are the things that we can start realizing and learn, and we need to change that somehow. I don't know. Uh, but these are things that are food for thoughts. Thank you, Tisan. Okay, Assalamualaikum. You're very good afternoon. Okay, thanks for Kariza for inviting me. Actually, when I thought HMC uh, is a fully government entity, but when I saw, we are the same. Lah. So I can talk the same lingo lah. So I thought you are not part of EPF. So everybody memang ada EPF lah, isn't it? Okay. So tapi yang tanya I, what is the dividend coming lah? Eh? <laughs> maybe I cannot share lah. Okay, today we listen about change, 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 change lah. So I think that's the reason kalau you tengok why EPF phone drastically have to change. Some people say, why you need to change? Even though in every day eh, EPF dapat good rating from netizen, from apa survey that they do, they do mystery shopping so bagi very good rating in EPF so people asking why you need to transform because kalau kita tak transform is we afraid we will become the next Nokia lah even though we rasa we safe lah because in technically people say as long ada general workers in Malaysia they still need to contribute to EPF but we don't know eh? we look on the landscape now a lot of gig economy people they are willing to work freelancer they are drag driver, food panda, delivery, all this kind of apa? this kind of business. So they are not contribute to EPF anymore, tau. So we are in the dangerous area juga. So this, I think the same concept, the mindset have to be transferred to you also lah. Even though you talk like MCMC, maybe one of the biggest intake entity in the under government, to maybe survive for maybe hundred years. We don't know. <laughs> maybe we. we like EPF also maybe in the track because people maybe say what happened if government announced EPF merged dengan SOSO so who, who will siapa makan siapa lah kan but don't recall lah <laughs> so I don't know I don't know that's right we don't know all about this so it's potentially maybe say LHDN merge with EPF so what happened to us so we don't know maybe MCMC combine with something we don't know because everything now is very drastically changed eh? rapidly changed so change is not about uh, the the individual, apa, the organisation itself is about our individual juga lah. So I think like me also, I I consider Gen Gen uh, X lah. It's not really Gen Gen Y go. So tapi we have to meet along this kind of people. So we have to understand the millennial needs, what they needs, what they are, they are apa, uh, in terms of product that we come out or something like that. Sometimes we cannot be short sendiri lah. 
my intro panjang sikit eh nanti because my slide I kena fast je fast forward because I think that we can share lah because at the end nanti uh, when we come up with something eh when we come up with product everything so our product maybe not really meet the needs of the the generation so like EPF is big difficult sebab kita serving from first day orang tu kerja until retirement so we kena accommodate this kind of age punya group of entity so how we can make it balance so even though in few meeting pun sometimes we decide that maybe we want to close branch we want to do virtual branch tapi how to accommodate people yang dah retirement ni nak 60 55 want to do withdrawal so sometimes we have to make some balance lah in between that so it's very challenging tapi it's on kata it's a really uh, good journey lah okay so that that's about the EPF itself lah so Okay, today I got 50 slides, so I tak sure I can finish it within half an hour. <laughs> Tapi ah, uh, I maybe skip a few, then maybe we share lah. Because I heard so you are not really uh, embarking digital transformation. Tapi you are start talking about change, optimization. I think that's good. You can also start from that level juga. We talk about uh, apa? Uh, more to how to optimize uh, process improvement, everything. Then slowly we move to transformation. So transformation is a very really orang kata buzzword and big word lah sebenarnya it's not like single punya apa a few months punya approach or something like that it's, it's, it's journey actually it's journey about the transformation so maybe later maybe we can sit down separate then I can share about how our journey towards transformation also lah so today because of 30 minutes I don't think so we can cover that lah so okay uh, my slide okay this one I just share about even view of EPF lah so everyone know EPF is a uh, We have a biggest fund lah in Malaysia lah Okay So we are going to 1 trillion punya organisation So it's very big eh So we are holding Malaysian punya people money lah So that's why uh, you are important to us lah So <laughs> you know, actually when you contribute uh, you gener uh, We generate back the revenue lah So we don't really spend Orang kata we belanja berhemah lah So that's why our office pun masih lama lagi <laughs> Tak modern macam MCMC ya. <laughs> Jadi I tengok dia punya wah. But okay, tapi I'm moving towards that Because uh, future generation punya working environment They are more like digital punya workplace They don't really like partition, table like that So actually we are moving towards that We going to be to move our new office In Kuasa Damansara in 2021 So nanti maybe I can invite you to visit there lah So we put new concept there lah We put smart TV We put uh, apa? hot desking concept There is no permanent seat anymore People datang kerja, they have to book their table Kalau nak buat meeting or something like that So there is no physical apa? partition untuk orang Untuk letak pasu bunga, letak gambar, everything No longer that We do the open concept after this So we are trying to do more more like New economic way office lah So we try to encourage people to innovate Otherwise, right, sometimes when you come to office, the environment make you not really innovative. So you macam in membuat bis the 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 scenario apa the the uh, environment of the office itself. So we moving towards that lah. Tapi I saw your office quite okay already lah. Then tapi ingat eh, we, we we still manage the 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 cost is wisely lah. We tak simply use the money to to spend like six star hotel something like that lah. So we still careful on that part lah Because we are holding people money Okay So that's about if we have So I think uh, we have a 68 branch So quite a lot lah So in future maybe we try to reduce it No more branch because Kalau you tengok all the FSI They are moving towards a branchless business All self-service All through mobile app All through application Because the new generation millennials They don't want to come to physical Like physical lah, they don't want to meet people anymore They are willing to like use their smartphone to do everything One stop solution So we say from the customer experience Everything from registration From payment Withdrawal Nomination, everything Do online But beside that of course we have to study what are the risks everything tu lah eh. Okay So this is for EPF, we have a few channel eh. So kalau kita tengok, we have a counter, we have a kiosk, we have a chatbot so Going to be launched uh, And then we have a mobile apps And then we have call center, we got mobile team And then we got a RAS, we call retirement advising services So that's one more approach that we're moving forward We don't want like EPF macam How to say, we are just people <coughs> masuk duit and then keluar duit 
So we have to give advice to them. Advice what they are going to do with their money later. Because statistically, we find out that right, mostly in Malaysia, after they withdraw 55 or 60, their money will be gone within one or two years. Because they don't know how to spend their money. Dapat duit, beli kereta. Buat kenduri kahwin anak. Kenduri kahwin anak spend 200 ribu, 300 ribu. Rare, right? Eh? Because they want money. But after that, they suffer. Dia tak ada kerja. Then dia terpaksa balik ya yeah, get sympathy from dia punya kid or something like that. So that's one big issue jugalah. So besides that as well we are doing the advisory. So how they can manage their money, how they can spend their money for the money lah. So I think when you are going to retire so you can use these services lah. Okay, about some data inside. So this one is internet punya information lah. So I think we talking about the total pollution of the apa? Uh, people in the world so 7 billion then unit mobile user 5 billion internet user for it's about uh, trend lah. so actually people moving to digital so this is the trend so we cannot run away anymore we tak boleh kata uh, kalau nak buat something uh, mana borang there is no more borang in this world of people moving to digital lah. so we have to transform we really need to transform ok Beside that, this is the internet user punya perspective also. So internet user in total pollution 57% is high also. Eh? And then uh, I believe MCMC come up with this statistic also. Eh? You have an internet statistic. So that might be useful. So maybe later uh, I can get some, some information from inside. So, so this uh, statistic also. So Malaysia is quite the highest uh, spend time in the internet. Eh? 8.05 hours. So everybody here is contributing to that lah. <laughs> so this is on survey lah. So eight hours is quite high eh. Worldwide punya six hours just spent. But still high. So when you say, hari-hari lapan jam using your, <laughs> utilize your internet. So we are quite high in this, in this cell lah. So I'm not sure, this one is a fact lah. This one from the survey done by someone lah. <laughs> Ah, that's why. Right. That's why. Right. have to do something because internet in Malaysia is still slow and quite expensive. <laughs> they don't yeah, yeah. have the it price. Is, in other surveys, say that Malaysia internet is more young, slow, no? In this region, lah, compared to other uh, like Singapore or something. Lah. So I hope you can do something, lah. <laughs> and then internet is done jadi commodity, lah. This is must, lah. So so it's no longer like orang kata if you buy a phone, you need uh, you don't need a data plan, lah. Data plan is a must. Sometimes people tak nak the the the, the, the apa, GSM call. Tu. They just need the internet saja. Because from internet everything they can do. Okay. So this is a common social media. So Malaysia confirm Malaysia we are using uh, WhatsApp lah. So even though recently case uh, apa, WhatsApp been been hijacked or something like that. So people still want to use WhatsApp. So this is another news lah. Uh, social media penetration, uh, Malaysia is quite highest, uh, 78 percent penetration. But you think what UAE is almost 100 percent. So people in UAE already use social media, 100 almost 100 percent. Uh, if you have a community that has social media, so in Malaysia still take up rate is still okay lah, uh, 78 among quite highest also lah. Uh. So I'm not sure how we can leverage on this data lah. Uh. So I think we can. Uh, Tak sure, is that part of your KPI to make sure the internet community in Malaysia, no. social media? Because, okay, the reason I show this because this is going to be a trend later. Target industry, everything is towards to mobile and internet and social media. So that's why when you come up with business plan, you have to look in this area. Don't focus on your small, small area ni macam yalah how to, to to do manual process anymore so start thinking of digital digital lah everybody in your mind is should be digital already so if you have smartphone you try to kira berapa banyak apps yang you pakai daily in term of digital lah jangan facebook jangan uh, whatsapp and a few normal apps lah is there any other apps that you use in your daily routine life so a lot of apps inside the 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 apa the the internet right now that you can utilize for your life in your consumption okay so this is about imaging technology i just share about there is a cloud computing punya uh, 94 percent workload will be processed by cloud data anymore so this is going to be one of the biggest topic also people are start talking moving towards cloud rather than on-prem but beside that of course 
there is a drawback in terms of security, data, everything. But I'm not too sure. Uh, in Malaysia, governance for government in terms of data under who? Uh? Is it mampu or something that will say data? Uh, let's say they say data cannot leave country or something like that. Because so far there is no guideline mentioned about this. So I'm not sure who's coming. I terbaca macam data raya. Is it MCMC punya? That's why mampu punya initiative tu. So because actually in Malaysia there is still we are so struggling because like agency by agency dia tak nak share the data. So how we want move to the analytic? We talk about analytic AI but everybody like tak mau share, tak mau share, tak mau share. So we can't do, we can't do much lah. Because decide of what data that we have, we cannot make a lot of, of apa, uh, benefit to the, the 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 nation lah. So that's why I'm not sure it's then like macam one framework to say that agency, among the agency that we can do data sharing or something like that, that we can tap on lah. But I think we are also struggling because one one of the EPF initiative, we don't want, uh, because we need a data from yeah, industry like insurance, like healthcare, everything. Because when we provide the services, we can give more value to the members. Rather than say you are the duit ni, you maybe can invest in this, but there is no fact here. So that's why we need the data. Because right now, kalau you tengok insurance, so premium they based on your risk already, your age, your location, your stay, your your health, your wellness. So actually, people now talking about how to link your your daily routine activity. To your health, you know. So there is uh, apps juga yang can track how many step today, uh, every day you you walk every day. So let's say ten thousand step equivalent to how many kilometer per day you walk saja. So the data may be used for insurance. Say this guy is quite healthy. So premium dia maybe can put more. They can put put, put low, pay lower, but interest dia a bit higher. Sama yang step hari hari maybe less than 100 meter per day punya walking that's guy maybe high risk so malas berjalan so maybe it's not really healthy people so this kind of data is quite important so so that's why uh, now we are talking about the, the the data itself of course in term of iot uh, 1.2 billion usd uh, could be generated by what through the uh, improved productivity lah so 6.2 billion hours workers productivity will be globally by 2021 meaning to say they are using ai so see, this is our threat. This human threat. Because there is an AI already, technology. They can make a decision, prediction. They no longer need human to make a decision. That's why some, uh, there is uh, some of the industry yang board member dia pun is based on AI. Sekarang kan board sometimes when they make decision based on emotion, based on dia punya human touch lah. Where we might make decision. We don't have a statistic to make decision. Now when there is leveraging on AI, all the technology, so we, they can utilize this in terms of decision making. So that's why we risk because you know the Sofia kan? The robot. Uh, uh, yeah. So Sofia. Uh, so <laughs> kalau you tengok the video, quite impressive. Huh? So they are learning, learning, everyday learning. Huh? Almost to human a bit lah. So they can read your facial, they can understand your your your, 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 your uh, how you you punya mood today when you talk to her. So they will do the prediction. No? They read because kalau you tengok kita punya facial everything sometimes we can send signal. They know today our mimic muka your mood ma macam mana. So they can can do some prediction because data is everywhere. Statistics is there. So so imagine eh, that's our threat now. Because we don't know maybe in future almost half of this office run by robot. You don't know. True, maybe RPA, robotic process automation, is there already. So I think somebody mentioned about automation, about the the process improvement. So in EPF, we already embarking RPA. So one of the challenge, people start worried lah. Orang yang buat kerja kerja rutin manual, they say habis lah. After this, I no longer relevant because all the routine job will be done by RPA, robotic process automation. So done by technology technology rather than people so that's why as a human eh, kita kena be <coughs> ready to change lah change is a must we tak boleh cakap takpelah I don't want lah to fight in this industry in this area anymore I just follow whatever lah I don't want to use technology anymore we cannot 
even though you are still young, middle age ataupun almost retired, so he can't run away from technology. Uh, like what Sabi said lah, like to Nokia lah. They do nothing wrong, tapi they they lost because of technology gain, so they fail on this area. So as an individual, so we have to adapt to this stuff. Okay, this is Malaysia Trails of uh, advertisement, Facebook, they used to 34 million, then Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, everything. So we think what? The way people do advertisement could change already. They no longer use surat kabar. What happened to Tusan Malaysia? What happened to normal newspaper? Paper based? So slowly gone. People use uh, apa? Uh, platform to, to reach out because this one more faster than nothing. Okay, and then 1.3 billion eh, expected spending in social media advertising. So it's a huge market already. So that's why we have to tap in this industry. We cannot like, run away from there already. Then at the same time, almost oh, sorry, <coughs> almost 90.8 million Malaysia purchase consumer goods. That one confirm around Malaysia. 12, 12 coming soon. Then two days more. 12, 12. Lazada, Shopee. Bulan lepas, 11-11 Satu kapal cargo tenggelam dekat, I don't know where Tapi, entire cargo tu semua 11-11 dia -11 sale So, Malaysia <laughs> one of the people yang impact, barang tak sampai So, if you order something on 11-11, check Maybe, your your goods not coming already Because, container tenggelam, so long So, semua barang yang we buy from China, I think, all gone So, maybe they have to be order lah so, Sure, I also that I always shopping the guy Shopee and Lazada. I really go to okay lah supermarket. Sometimes we go lah for social saja lah. But we use online platform already. So this is trend right now. We cannot run away. So I'm not sure about MCMC. Do you allow the staff buy item from Shopee, Lazada, and send to office? Bule. In India. Bule. Bule. <laughs> in in okay, India, India, because of volume very big, ah, huh? volume is big, no. People order the sauce, so -so. then our procu uh, our procurement make a policy. One item, they just to ring it. They ring it. They do that. So so they handle the delivery part, charge lah. So all those so that's what we do lah. We got volume very big ah. So I can't say it very good. Because we everyday work kan, from Monday to Friday. So we order barang, of course di hantar rumah barang tak sampai because we are not there. So we always use office as our delivery address lah. Because of the volume is very big. In the UPF, one day berapa parcel coming ah. Oh, online dia. So, people memang, that's the habit now. Delivery. So, that's right. We cannot run away anymore. Revenue generated. We can't run away. So, we can maybe think how to generate income also. Tapi, staff marah lah. Dia begini, if you have staff, it's safe lah. I think, kalau macam ni, staff, okay lah. I think, they consider. They consider kan? Because, the certificates of the company, of the parcel receipt ke apa kan? Yes. Yes, uh, betul. That, that's what the management make decision for. They say okay, we can because they want to promote the digital, apa digital savvy community. Then they call like macam Malaysia also. I'm not sure they call like uh, digital, uh, apa uh, cashless society. So we are promoting that lah right now. So in India also we are promoting people use technology. So that's why we tak stop them from deliver the goods in the office. But we make profit on top of that lah. So we charge. So it's still not stock lah. People still order. Two ringgit nothing lah kan. So they just pay lah. Okay, this is about Malaysia so. 2.8 uh, million Malaysian are connected to internet. So 80% lah. Eh? Uh, eh? And then tadi dah cakap 8 hours, 5 minutes. Okay. Malaysia have on on average 10 social media account. That's why I'm not sure. This one is statistic. I ada tak, I ada satu dua je social media. I tak banyak lah. Tapi it's true. Some people, they are, when they create Facebook ah. Uh, they have so many account. Uh, when they log in as a this guy, maybe yang apa, yang a bit nerds, they are logging is as the ID lah. So they have the group, like everything. So when they change their punya habit a bit, they log in using different ID. 
So some people memang ada a few social media account lah. But from statistics say that social media account per user lah. So it's quite high. Okay. Beside that also 88% people Malaysia search online for product and 48 Malaysian uh, use e-hailing lah. That one true also. It's very comfort. So that's why it's one of the industry yang akan kill the taxi member issue uh, ramai because of that taxi pun dah jadi get driver is by dah join my car so they can they cannot fight anymore they have to change they have to accept it they have to really then coming gojek eh masa that's why i banyak i slide <laughs> so okay you all ada sampai berapa 40 40 okay lah apa i report sikit lah so i like to talk about the, the, the trend lah the trend and technology sell lah so 47 Malaysian stream TV lah same like me I tengok Netflix I use online all online media lah so tengok live so can see them live bola everything use your smartphone demo so that's why it's going to be a trend lah okay this is about EPF itself so I account so we have a product ah. do you have an icon so you can log in then you can see ah, a lot of improvement coming lah so the best part is this mobile app is internally developed we are not outsourcing so we develop using our internal capability okay so where you can see all your balance everything but bear in mind this one is just for us it's just a startup coming we were revamping uh. we do more a lot of improvement uh. okay so the take out rate is high uh. I think, uh, we target to be 90% okay. still got a community yang tak ada the, the apps uh, because our member 70 million uh. so for Majikan we have 100% lagi already take out rate Okay, this is each other one for employer. So there is a mobile app also. Okay, this is EA lah. Because of time consuming, I can be. Yeah, I go for transformation lah. So EA about this lah, high level. So that's why we establish EA in EPF lah. Kalau you tengok, this is rumah tinggal lah. Rumah tinggal kalau you tak ada proper architecture, governance, framework, this looks like lah. Department ni nak buat ni, department ni nak buat ni. This department ni nak buat ni, there is a, no standard governance control it. So with EA, you can do structured town planning and everything lah. You don't create complexity. Okay, this is about uh, value proposition. I go. And then it's uh, the process here lah. That why I can share later lah kalau you nak go through how we can go. Okay, this is a transformation. Okay, setting the context dulu lah. So okay, uh, first, the rise of citizen developer. Eh. Kalau we tengok ah, uh, uh, Kebanyakan uh, teknologi sekarang Business user can do already It's not IT lingo anymore Last time cakap, oh ini budak IT yang kena buat This is a technology thing But nowadays, uh, a lot of things is business people can do already No excuse anymore Orang business tak boleh cakap, oh I tak tahu nak guna ni is IT thing No, no, no RPA, Robotic Process Automation is about business, it's not about IT How you change back your normal routine job to to script something like that so you need to do some programming so that's one of that and then demand ah, increase of speed I'm not sure about MCMC in EPF we got a lot of chain requests a lot of chain requests they minta uh, IT can you do this <coughs> we said uh, can but I need 6 months 6 months in this world is no longer accepted in this world people talk about 2 weeks 3 weeks product can release they no longer about talk about six month project, one year project. You buat project after launch, tak relevant dah. There is no need in the market. So kalau you tengok all the apa, startup, company, industry, they are very fast. Come on, come on. So imagine bila uh, contoh saya pakai iPhone, eh, when new apps update iOS, imagine how many apps update you immediately. So how fast they can do, do development. That's why in our life is talking about how fast we can move they no longer how big we are lah we are not if even, even big also if we move slowly like dinosaur lah eh, they are big so very slow move eh. they pose eh. so sometimes small creatures small prone to survive lah so that's why how you move faster lah so look back on your organization so how you can be more faster and agile people talk about agile fast something like that so there is mindset need to be built in your 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 organization, Agile but I know it's, it's difficult, in EPL also very challenging when we say Agile lah, people oh, complain lah, mana boleh you ada process, governance, policy have to follow 
you kena hantar borang, apply this, check this governor, bring to this meeting, bring to this committee, five committee to go to get approval. That one, you can't do it just. So you have to reprocess, <coughs> change back the process. So it's about that. Huh? Okay, uh, and then unleashing new IT, so it got speed, so make it faster. Shift from cloud to container. This one is new term. Okay. Now people talking about moving to cloud. I'm not sure about MCMC. Do you host your own data centers more? Ke move depends. Huh? So in EPF, uh, almost 90% of our app is on prem. So the, now the challenge is we have to more have to be hybrid like we cannot on prem anymore. Okay, this is one of the challenges. So. And then of course people talking about the container base huh? Container base I can share later lah It's a big topic also How to move to container Okay Project to product There is a new term People don't talk project anymore People talk your product Product, product, product So all this item here can be a product So you can define it as a product, product, product So when you can product you can agile it You can make it, it within few spring Okay so that one you have to slowly lah move to the agile punya methodology So I think you have to go for some courses everything to understand the, the scrum method Pernah dengar scrum lah? Scrum, people talk about agility scrum uh, Where you got a, 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 a sprint they call It's sprint two weeks lah Two weeks come up with a prototyping Come up with a, they call MVP lah Minimal viable product And then come up with a product So it's talk about speed anymore No longer like traditional way doing project so that's why I move from product uh, project to product. Okay, this is a challenge and opportunity lah. Okay, this is a big. Okay, this one a big. Keep the light on because we are running on operation also. So remember the issue of KLA punya itu disruption because the that one also issue lah because they don't want to repeat <coughs> the cost cost switch eh. You aware about this? MCMC tak tak. So that's that's about IT operation lah. So even though you tengok operation excellent, everything improvement, but you have to keep the lights on. Lah. So you have to really maintain it. So sometimes something yang end of life, end of support, you have to really look on that. Jangan straight away nak fikir transformation. You forget about your existing, you have to support. You also have to carry on. Okay, this one is about the outage. And then uh, of course compliance, risk, everything. Cyber security, that one is the biggest threat. So, I think everybody aware about this, all the incident that eh? about Malino recently, CMB, all about the data leakage and ransomware. Lah. So, this one also we can't run away from this. Lah. So, we have to look on this part. So, so MCMC got your own security team, so I believe they were looking on that. So, okay. Not sure about MCMC incident last time, pun, big one topic. Eh? The, all the data, apa, telco information leakage. So, that's the thing. Malaysia pun nak mahu dia CBS Okay, so I'm, I'm one of the team <laughs> Cause until now I dapat call banyak daripada Another world country lah It's a scamming lah, scam lah So Malaysia also recently saya berjaya kan 800, 700 lah uh, Yang kena takap 700 something eh Because of the scammer lah So Malaysia boleh lah <laughs> Okay, these are resources also, people lack skill set. So you are talking about the digital transformation, you have to look on these resources also. Lah. So how to uh, fulfill the gap. Okay, this is a EPF punya transformation journey lah. So it's about uh, from our that traditional kiosk, we are moving to our account, then we're moving to workflow, centralized processing, and then we rebranding, we come up with a BI, data warehouse, everything. Then now we are moving towards transformation. So we are when people asking, did EPR already transform? Uh, coming soon. Because we just finished our roadmap and blueprint. The blueprint is there already. So 20, 2020 is the time to execute the roadmap. So kita ada the roadmap. How long can we do the roadmap? Okay, the roadmap, uh, because it's project basis, is a uh, eight months thing. Now. Eight months thing. Come out the blueprint dulu. We have to come up with blueprint, your strategy roadmap. You tak boleh terus execution. You have to know what are you want to be in next five years, next ten years. So your strategic alignment semua kena ada. You cannot say we I want to do digital transformation. You tanya what is your strategy? I don't know. So you have you need to have a strategy dulu. What are you going to be in next ten years, next five years? What is your rolling strategy plan? 
So if you already have this kind of strategy plan and everything, so they map to the transformation. So what's your strategy plan? Ten years. Okay, uh, kalau tengok a few area lah. So that's why they call like uh, uh, how they get strategic trust they panggil. There is a pillar, pillar, pillar that you have to look at. So from digital enablement, from the I remember ada few lah. Uh, from your strategy, from your people, from the process be. So ada a few area pillar that you really have to look strategic trust. So macam PF uh, one of the our transo to make our retirement apa kita punya pencarum retire retirement happy sampai like that. So we have to build dia punya wellness sampai like that. We don't want like macam disimpan duit we give it. We dah contribute the value lah. Okay? Freedom. Kalau oh, satu minit lagi. Okay, this is important. Eh? Focus on customer. When you build, tadi I try punya app tu, huh? my my comps lah. My comps something like that. So when you build something, you must based on customer focus, eh? So you cannot build the app based on your punya internal punya input saja. So you need to do the the apa, design thinking. Do you practice design thinking? Practice ya. You know the design thinking process yang sambil tunjuk gambar yang sticky note sticky note tadi. That's a design thinking process, really. Where you come, you do the empathy. You come with uh, people punya apa? They call. Uh, I can't remember the term. Eh? At the end, you, uh, you come buat ada user experience perspective. So you cannot buat application, buat product based on internal input. You cannot do that anymore. You need to get input from your stakeholder, from your customer. Focus, customer. Focus, 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 group. focus group. You you outreach. Macam IPF, you outreach satu Malaysia pergi team. Jumpa petani, jumpa ini, jumpa budak grab, grab driver, jumpa pekerja, jumpa industrial, jumpa. Get dia punya input semua. You table it, we come up with the journey mapping. Then baru we can work with the product. Otherwise, when you go to the product, your product maybe dia target few market saja. So that's why in Malaysia banyak product project fail because when they do, they just based on internal assumption. They assume je. So they don't really outreach to that. Okay. So that's important. So that's why people talk now about KYC lah. Know your customer. Okay. So why banyak lagi lah. Masa nak cakap. Maybe just share. Yes, uh, I nanti I buat license sila lah maksudnya. Kalau jadi is not too much kan? Yes. There's one key uh, success factor that you done. Okay, kalau tengok ini PF uh, is about culture and people. It's not about technology. Technology is just an enabler. So about how you bring the culture. Actually, I dah work in EPF almost uh, 16 years already. I see the difference lah. When I move to EPF, masih, sorry to say, it's gam masih government mindset lah. Masih slow, masih seniority, masih uh, how to say ah, uh, uh, bureaucracy, red tape, everything lah. Then, of course, the change of the culture, people moving in from up inside so of course there is a lot of, of blended lah so we ambil gen Y, gen Z, millennial B we blend it masukkan this, this group, this group people then we harmonize it so the culture is totally changed siapa yang mastermind it's not actually it start from C level sebenarnya it must be start from the C level they have to understand how they want to bring this organization journey towards the excellent so it's not about operation sangat lah it's about to to how to you know, change. change lah culture is have to change culture so that's why EPF different last time bila kalau kita open simple lah last time we we when we do some some talk like this lah very hard to get participant kalau open lah open untuk registration tak ada participant nowadays lah we call pas speaker from external within a few hours full terpaksa close because demand is very high people eager to know people eager to learn dia ada the culture untuk reskill and upskill because they know kalau dia tak reskill and upskill they going to be not relevant anymore so it create like competitive punya behavior in the in the among the clicks but it's, it's positive punya competitive lah it's not like tikam orang jatuh orang it's more like I want to be the best, I'm the best lah. 
so that's the culture yang been been apa inside the organization lah in the organization but i know we cannot like 100% towards to that lah of course ada yang 20% still towards to negative side yang complain 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 lot but we have to manage this kind of people lah. so it's about people actually so have to bring set up a new culture bring a new way of of thinking doing things lah Okay, process improvement we we do a lot of macam uh, we open macam innovation innovative uh, innovation punya uh, competition we do uh, macam uh, in Ipia we call we give a grant yang below five thousand ten thousand ringgit untuk orang yang nak innovate let's say we we allocate some budget and then everyone in EPF they can contribute kalau dia ada idea how to improve the process if they need a, 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 a some financial we will support that they, they have to macam shark tank you know tak shark tank your concept so they come they present the your proposal what is the value benefit how they can improve current process how to do the optimization everything they do that so it's really change maksudnya when they do day to day they berfikir how can i improve my process Oh, I got some idea. They apply, they present. Then we give some grant to them. They execute. Sometimes the value is not much lah, tapi the the, the culture tu yang penting. So we create this kind of of platform untuk dia orang contribute idea. Ah, uh, and then we we do open. Idea is everyone idea. Tak idea doesn't mean come from top management saja. Everyone can contribute. So there is no uh, kata boundary anymore. We create this kind of 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 culture. So that's how we move into us lah. Okay. Sorry, I slide everybody lagi tak sempat nak cover lah. Session lain dan tu. Ah, I can set another session lah. I can set out the thing. Ah, that's one tip also. When you come with a slide, sorry, sorry, sorry. You have to do infographic. You have to do infographic. Tapi ini bukan saya buat. We have a team. In India, there is a team yang people really focus on. You bagi the content, contest, you bagi the storyline board, and then they will do the infographic to make it happen. Make happening, eh? So that's why kalau I can flip through banyak infographic yang tengok kat slide, nampak? So it's more infographic thing, something like that. So people senang tangkap. People really can can tangkap dia. So all about this lah. See? Ini yang ada. Total around six thousand lah. Six thousand. Six thousand. HQ only around two thousand. Then scatter lah over the bunch of spaces. Because you're on consumer, so you're not getting the money. Correct. Our total ni apa? Members is fourteen million. So target market speed. So you are one of them lah. So you see, kalau we are not really up to the standard, so member lah you of course akan complain and all lah kan. So that's why we have to change. We have to do more. So that's why just wait. Next two three years, totally new services coming from India. We recognize. I think we can see a lot of changes in the service. Correct. But the one is more to improvement. Yeah. Bangunan itu pakar kan dunia PJ kan. Ibu semua ni. Our investment. Medical MCI MCI tu bangun dia ni kan. Ibu semua dah dah dah. 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 Ibu semua Okay, kita nak transform. Okay, optimisation. Semua, semua tak ketat saja. Besar, kita kembali okay with apa partner. We have to semua itu saja lah. Yeah, maybe Mr. Thomas has that question because DPF is also under regulation, so there are a lot of kena regulate, kena ikut proses kan, kena ada evidence, kena ada regulation. Okay, how do you change? Okay, if asking about EPF ni, it's been regulated, yes, but uh, first EPF is not bank, so we are tak perlu governed by uh, bank negara punya guideline. So all the apa, GPIS, uh, recently RMIT, we no need to be governed by that. Tapi it doesn't say that we not be governed, we tak follow lah. We still follow, tapi we are not audited by that. Of course, in term of others mampu so. Tak really, we are not governed by any mampu of 
No. Uh, so that's why in EPF is quite tengah-tengah lah. So we will choose for those yang really yang uh, okay okay we we play bella something yang slow down hours process everything. So you might be find a way how to to answer that lah. Uh, then of course investment up of course they got a security commission in term of amla all the the act in term of doing the the apa investment lah. That one common lah. So I think we are not really being governed lah sebenarnya. Uh, even though we are under MOF, tapi MOF pun tak really. That's why in technology, step point of view, we are almost move ahead lah. We don't want to wait, tunggu mampu and now so buat ni baru we buat. So you already done whatever that we think that may be relevant to the industry. So we straight away to without waiting them to to instruct us what to do, what to do like that. So technology wise, we are among the the better make faster lah implementing this one. But we have to be careful also lah because we are holding members money juga lah. So when we do project, must be value <coughs> value proposition must be there lah. It's for something, not to just spend for the technology. Okay, any other question? So slide banyak sebenarnya. Ah, one question. Yeah. Uh, what kind of uh, investment that you have to do system for them to to log in to 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 apa, deliver their the activity task and things lah. So there is a sub tracking system to do that because beside that also uh, we implement like apa, more like collaboration and remote access tools lah. So that's where people can really uh, use the technology for the daily punya routine job lah. So we really memang encourage uh, mobile apps. In fact, dalam EPF not only IT people yang yang eager to do mobile apps department sendiri pun eager to do ah they come up with their own mobile apps sendiri tapi we have to control lah so there is a lot of demand from our learning center they come up with onboarding for new staff joining they create a mobile app just for onboarding staff so they creative lah in EPF when they do macam uh, conference everything they no longer apa Tanya soalan macam tu, all pakai slido, uh, they do kahoot, they, they they bring the the concept tu, they they uh, they use quiz pakai kahoot, slido for Q&A, there is no longer style tu lah. Ha ha. Kena mana nak slido kena ban? Here we do slido, open, we open, even though big forum, kita organise international forum tu, we use that, we call all the speaker from international. It's, it's about that lah, so it's really changed lah. Mm -hmm. I see the, the 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 aura is positive lah. It's really changed lah. I, tada lah, I kalau semua you all join kita pula nanti. <laughs> After you, actually, uh, EPM akan ada recruit ramai lagi. Yeah. <laughs> Because in, uh, we we need the we need the talent lah. We need a talent people, everything. Especially in our digital transformation, we have identified a few a few area that maybe let off macam data analytic people our data scientists <laughs> or this kind of technology juga lah besides that we have let off marketing marketing people you may know why EPF uh, uh, invest in marketing because we one of the our subject trust is marketing mindset the management set already staff kena ada marketing mindset how to to to, to make it profit 
to your your, your product, not only profit lah, to generate business value proposition to organisation. So that's why letakkan satu marketing mindset. Dia tanamkan marketing mindset dalam our all staff. So you have to think, 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 think. So they they bring this kind of culture in this in this organisation. So be okay lah. If you ask me, that's why I stay dan 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 tak resign lagi lah. Because of the 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 change, the move of this team. Okay, any other question? Oh, I think we can open sekali kan cik Sabri. Yeah, boleh. Cik Sabri, yeah. yeah. that's the only thing I want. I want to say is when they when we talk about process improvement, you should do the process improvement first. Before before yeah. you do automation or digital transformation. Betul. A lot of people here they do the digital transformation and automation, but become more bureaucratic. That they do manually, is it? So you must actually you know, do the process improvement, shorten the thing, how to improve. Then whether you can see whether you do automation or digital transformation can improve the existing cycle. Yeah. And baby step, don't straight away want to become a sprinter. You have to start slowly, you know, training you know, then okay. It's a journey lah. That's why when you go any of even though when I go with Sabri dekat, Uh, London also when they talk, they are still talking about transformation. Yeah, but still new topic for them. They are not really straight when we move to that. They want European or UK punya style lah. So that's why BPA is important, all this kind of thing. Then what oh, about the process architecture first, establish the, the foundation first. Bila benda tu dah strong, then baru they talk about the transformation. So don't really follow orang buat transform. Okay lah. Statistic was I think 90% transformation fail lah. Organization. 90% transformation, digital transformation fail because follow the trend. Orang nak buat transformation, dia buat. Tapi without knowing what are they are trying to do. True. It's true. So, understand your needs. Faham dulu what are going to be, what your strategy. Then baru move towards that. Ha, jangan terus takut tak relevan. Buat digital transformation and then you fail Lagi pain lah You done through the investment and everything So even though it's PFSO, we still struggling lah Moving towards that But we already have a strategy, we already Tanam the culture, the mindset there So at least strong <coughs> support lah Moving towards that Because at the end, we need a people okay, and We cannot say, ah, tak apa lah, we hire Robot buat kerja, can apa ni In this situation, can apa We still need people Okay, any other question? Okay, kalau tak ada, uh, thank you to invite me and Mr. Sabri lah. I know my slide banyak, tapi I try to, I suka bagi ilmu to other people lah. Because, because, because for me, this knowledge sharing is important lah. Uh, because I, I also still learning, learning, learning lah. Uh, when you learn, you still you know that you, you still don't know lah. Uh, so, learning is never ending. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Right.